Romulus Space Station. I'd like to invite anyone surprised to hear that director Fede Alvarez and Alien are a match made in space hell to stop watching this and go watch his 2013 remake of The Evil Dead. But come back immediately after, because I will get in trouble if you don't. It was the first time in 20 years the Necronomicon was opened, and horror fans pinned the survival of the beloved franchise on the young director's efforts. That faith was rewarded with one of the most effective horror remakes ever made. And that ability to both honor and modernize the sacred text of the genre is the most obvious explanation for the success of Alien Romulus. Like a kid in a Freudian nightmare of a candy store, Alvarez bellies up to a feast of alien iconography and cryptozoology with abject glee, even and especially in scenes of bone-crunching mayhem. Alien Romulus distills the franchise into its most functional, focused form, and once it starts cooking, it doesn't let up. Top to bottom, Alien Romulus displays exemplary production design, which, while nodding to what's to come in the future set Aliens, owes far more to the totemic textures of Ridley Scott's original movie. The industrial futurism of Michael Seymour's original sets is wonderfully replicated in the malfunctioning Renaissance station, colored by red warning lights and the spindly blacks of H.R. Geiger's xenomorphology as they weave into that aesthetic as threateningly as ever. Alien Romulus also represents what's undeniably the franchise's most cohesive blend of computer-generated and practical techniques employed to bring its locations, creatures, and injury effects to life. The saying goes that the best CG is the kind you don't notice, and the team here has achieved a largely seamless blend of all those disparate elements. The irony here is that I immediately have to contradict myself. There are a few times, especially in the third act, where you can very much tell Alvarez is cutting to close-ups of fake-as-hell xenomorph heads being blown apart. But those moments, or times where you can clock a miniature being used, do as much to evoke the franchise's first two movies as any iconic one-liner or recreated shot. There is a homemade feel to it that just really grounds it in some sort of tactile reality that makes it feel like if that acid gets on you, you're actually dead. Alvarez really lets Romulus breathe through its first act, taking time to establish the central relationship between Rain and Android Andy, who live as siblings in indentured servitude on Wayland yutanis Jackson Star Colony. Desperate to leave the colony's perpetually sunless gloom, which Alvarez renders as a metal hellscape befitting of a Terminator flash forward, Rain and Andy reconnect with their old scavenging buddies, the crew of the Corbalan 4. Rain's resourceful nature and protectiveness of her synthetic sibling get the audience on her side quickly, and as a performer, Kaylee Spaney does great work believably grounding Rain in the moment-to-moment -moment horror of a young adult making their first foray into the big scary world and finding out it's way worse than they ever could have imagined. Rain is heavily solution-focused, which gives her plenty of hero moments as the movie goes on, but Alvarez and co-writer Rogo Saegas' script doesn't hold much space for her to change along the way, or to at least highlight what makes her so resilient in the first place. David Johnson winds up with the trickiest tightrope to walk in his performance as Andy, constantly balancing childlike hesitation with cold efficiency, collating what information he should offer and when, and which of his bedrock directives he should follow. But Johnson holds the core of Andy well once that conflict becomes central to the plot. The accompanying unpredictable shifts in Andy's personality serve not just to ratchet up the tension, but also as a mirror by which the human characters see themselves reflected. As for the crew of the Corbalan, sibling pairs Tyler and Kay and Bjorn and Navarro, Alvarez and Saegas employ archetypes which will be instantly familiar for Alien fans. You too? Tyler's steely reserve evokes Dallas. Bjorn's edge and bandana call up both Aliens Parker and Aliens' Vasquez. You get the idea. While numerous films in the franchise flirt with slasher conventions, Alien Romulus commits harder to the subgenre's quintessential structure than ever before. As such, probably wise not to get too attached to anyone who speaks mostly in jokes or exposition. Alvarez establishes the ensemble economically, especially during the Corbalan's trip up to the Renaissance, where cuts to each character reveal how they react in stressful situations, reinforcing those archetypes just before the acid hits the fan. Isabella Merced's K gets the most personalized material, spending much of the movie separated from the main group and playing catch-up in increasingly awful fashion. 
While these cutaways do function well as their own little alien vignettes, it should be noted that as they crop up through Act 2, they splinter the focus a little and lead to Romulus's only real pacing hiccups. That's not to say there's no utility to the way that time is spent, though. Kay's agenda is more complicated than she's letting on, which opens the door not only to Romulus's most brazen theme work, the nature of which I'll leave vague for now, but for late twists that kick off the movie's audacious, cacophonous, and unbearably tense final showdown. Alien Romulus rarely shies away from the chance to celebrate its forerunners, mostly for the better, but in one significant case, definitely for the worse. But let's focus first on what works and works well. Alvarez understands exactly how and when to deploy Alien's most iconic imagery. Though the scavenger's initial exploration of the derelict renaissance is a quiet, tense affair, just below the surface you can feel Alvarez's hand establishing the space like a kid breathlessly showing off all of his toys before settling on which one he wants to share with you first. Aren't you lucky? Duct systems, airlocks, stun batons, motion sensors, a dead synthetic, maybe the odd tweak from flame to freeze thrower just to shake things up here and there. But Alvarez doesn't spend too much time fetishizing these inanimate objects. They're purely functional, they're part of the world, and so they don't feel like they cross the line of being fan service for the sake of being fan service. Romulus even finds space, plenty in fact, to incorporate elements of Creative Assembly's excellent alien isolation game. Whether it's the registration points which Alvarez deploys in moments which wind up serving as devilishly clever nods to the Godfather, or the flares which get used to clever practical and defensive ends, it's emblematic of an attitude that all alien is good alien, an ethos that drives this whole movie forward and unlocks its most shocking narrative turns. And that's a lot of stuff that you've seen in alien movies before. I do want to stop down real quick and talk about one thing that you haven't, which is zero gravity. It's, you sit and watch this movie and you go, oh my god, I can't believe they haven't done this yet. Maybe it's sort of technology, maybe we just haven't been at the point where we can do that convincingly with xenomorphs and facehuggers and stuff, but Alvarez deploys zero gravity so well here. I don't wanna, again, there's some stuff in the trailer, you can see that they're playing around with that a bit, but it's, it's it leads to really great visual moments, really, really fun action beats, and for something that we have seen in action movies before, in other space horror movies even, it's nice to see Alvarez coming in and saying, Alien's the granddaddy of this space, and, and we're gonna do it right, and they really do. Run. And yet, like Wayland yutani has been known to do, Alien Romulus can't seem to abandon some ideas which, on their face, seem destined for messy ends. As I mentioned, Romulus handles most of its exposition quite elegantly early on, but Alvarez overplays his hand and commits to, as executed here, a deeply flawed vehicle by which to deliver that information once we're on the Renaissance station. I'm dancing around the details for spoiler's sake, but I have never been more sure that you will know exactly what I mean. This choice by no means derails Romulus, the movie racks up plenty of goodwill in other ways, it just feels like a wholly unnecessary evil and the only part of the movie that regularly breaks the suspension of disbelief. Which is saying something, because this is a movie about genetically perfect killer aliens. Are you sure you want to do this? Evoking the genetic f that always spells doom in these movies, Alien Romulus is a lean, mean, chimeric beauty. Fede Alvarez proves that his Evil Dead remake was no fluke. The director seamlessly taps into the narrative and aesthetic keystones of the series and marshals them to breathtaking ends. Romulus occasionally takes a turn down a dead-end hall pace-wise, and unfortunately its most audacious bridge to the franchise's past is extremely rickety, but those missteps are forgivable considering how confidently and judiciously Alvarez handles them elsewhere. Helped along by a talented ensemble of young actors and reference quality production design, Alien Romulus's back to basics approach to blockbuster horror boils everything fans love about the tonally fluid franchise into one film. And it's one that you're going to need to start making time for the next time you plan on marathoning Alien and Aliens. Thanks for watching. For more reviews, check out what we thought of Twisters and Deadpool and Wolverine. And as always, stick with IGN.